Hey everyone, if you're really into PC gaming, you'll probably have a separate graphics card instead of relying on your CPU's integrated graphics. However, sometimes you start playing a game and then you get laggy, choppy graphics and low frame rates, which sucks. When you check Task Manager, you notice that your graphics card is barely being used. What gives? Well, there's a bunch of reasons why this might be happening. Firstly, if your graphics card simply isn't appearing at all within Task Manager, then it might not be installed correctly inside your case. If you built the PC yourself, firstly check to see that the GPU is properly inserted into the PCI Express slot on the motherboard with the clip fully secured. The GPU shouldn't seem loose if you gently pull up on it. Also make sure that the PCI Express cable from the power supply unit is fully inserted into the GPU. There should be no gap between the connectors. If your GPU still isn't appearing when booting back up, you should reinstall the display drivers for it. To do this, head on over to the NVIDIA or AMD website and search for the drivers for your exact model. Download them and run through the install process as standard. This usually takes a few minutes and the screen might flicker a bunch, but that's normal, don't worry. You'll then need to restart afterwards and hopefully then everything will be displayed correctly after this. But if you get in poor GPU performance in games, the next thing to check is that you're properly powering it. If your GPU requires two or three PCI Express connectors, you might need to run multiple separate cables from your PSU. You shouldn't use the pigtail connector. This is actually a whole other topic, which I discuss in detail in another video. But I wanted to quickly touch on this point because underpowering your GPU can result in bad gaming performance. So this is definitely worth checking. I'll discuss Windows specific settings to check in a minute. But the final physical thing to check is that your display cable, whether that's DisplayPort or HDMI, is actually plugged into your graphics card and not your motherboard at the back of your case. This is a simple mistake to make and we've all done it once or twice. But naturally, if you plug your monitor's cable into your motherboard, your graphics card ain't gonna be much use. You're simply bypassing it and then any games you play will be powered by your CPU's integrated graphics instead. At this point, we can be fairly sure the card is installed properly. So now we move on to window settings. There's a little known area called graphics settings, which you can access by hitting search and typing graphics. Click the result and it'll list various programs and games you have installed and what their mode is. Basically, if a game is listed as power saving here, it's likely to be using your CPU's integrated graphics and not your separate graphics card. Be sure to check both desktop apps and Windows apps in the list at the top, because some games installed through the Windows Store might have the wrong settings applied to them. Once you've seen your game, click on it and ensure that high performance is selected. This will ensure that your discrete GPU is being used and not the integrated graphics. Although in my case, I got my power settings to make sure that the GPU is always used. This brings us on to the next thing to check, Windows power modes. These dictate exactly how much computing power will be used and it can make a big difference, especially on laptops where battery life needs to be saved, of course. Search for power mode and then click to check your power mode. Firstly, you should switch to the performance or ultimate mode if you have it. If you don't, then I'll put details in the description to get this. While running in full power mode will drain a laptop's battery life, you can always play on a performance mode when gaming and then switch back to a power saving mode afterwards and then you get the best of both worlds. Before moving on, there's one more thing to check. Click to change the mode and then click through to advanced power mode settings. Scroll down and expand out PCI Express. Then disable link state power management. This setting relates to how the active state power management works on your PCI Express port, which is what your GPU is plugged into. So if this port is trying to save power, your GPU will be throttled. As a result, disabling this setting and restarting your PC can sometimes help a lot when gaming. Next up, you should update everything. Update your game, update the game launcher like Steam or GOG, update your card's display drivers, check for Windows updates, and even update your PCI Express cable's software. Kidding. Well, on that last point. But if you do have a weak GPU performance when playing a PC game, rule out the obvious by updating all the relevant software. This will probably be the first thing that people will ask you if you post on the game's support forums or try to contact the developer, after all. While it's unlikely that a Steam bug, for example, will be causing a massive performance issue when gaming, just update everything to be sure. Yes, this might take half an hour or so, especially if there's lots of pending Windows updates, but it's worth trying. The next thing I wanted to point out is the Windows Task Manager isn't completely accurate. If you're gaming and getting fairly good performance and FPS, but you're mainly concerned because Windows Task Manager is only showing 5% GPU use, for example, then maybe there's no actual issue here. 
If your computer or your laptop is getting hot when gaming and a program like HW Monitor or HW Info 64 is showing your GPU warming up and being used, it's likely that everything is actually working correctly. But if you still have concerns, there's two other things I wanted to discuss. The game might be CPU heavy, or maybe some of your hardware is just starting to show its age a bit now. I'll discuss that hardware point in a minute, but firstly, the game that you're playing might simply not use much of your graphics card at all. Some games simply use more of your CPU than your GPU because they need to perform lots of complex calculations, but not necessarily graphical calculations, to keep track of everything within the game. This is especially true for simulation games like City Skyline or the Total War series. This compares to a shooter game where less calculations are needed and there's often a bigger emphasis on the graphics, and hence the graphics card. So if you were playing Flight Simulator and wondering why your CPU is maxed out, but not your GPU, that's probably why. However, the other possibility is that some of your hardware is just a bit outdated nowadays. For example, your CPU might be a bit underpowered, meaning that it's become a bit of a bottleneck. This will hold back your gaming performance and often leave your graphics card underutilized. One solution here is to explore overclocking, either with software like Ryzen Master or by going into your motherboard BIOS and tweaking the relevant settings. This is a whole other tutorial in itself, to be honest, and I'll put more information down in the description for this. But I would suggest starting out with software-based tweaks and seeing whether those help improve the CPU or GPU inconsistencies that you were seeing in the first place. In other words, launch Intel XTU if you have an Intel CPU or AMD Ryzen Master if it's an AMD CPU. Then follow the instructions to boost your CPU so that it runs faster than it's originally designed for. That's all that overclocking really is, to be honest. Although software-based overclocks won't always be tailored to your exact CPU, especially because every silicon chip can vary slightly in overclocking potential. That's why serious overclockers will actually jump into the BIOS to finalize their overclocks, tweaking the frequency and voltage as required. Overclocking is a pretty fun area that can result in free extra performance, but I should caution that it's more of an advanced technique. So you shouldn't attempt this if you're a beginner at PC building and maintenance. The other option is to actually upgrade some of your PC components. For example, if your RAM is holding you back when gaming, buy some extra RAM sticks. Running two sticks is usually better than three or four sticks, but there's no major issues with running multiple RAM sticks if they're all the exact same model and you do genuinely need to overcome a RAM bottleneck. Equally, if your CPU is the issue and overclocking isn't really helping enough, consider upgrading the CPU with something more powerful, such as one with more physical cores. Just be sure to buy one that is compatible with your setup. For example, another Raptor Lake CPU if you have a Raptor Lake motherboard, or another AM4 CPU if you have a DDR4 Ryzen-based system. If you're interested to learn more, I discussed the best PC parts to buy in another video if you wanted to check that out. And that wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click the thumbs up button. This tells the YouTube algorithm that more people should see this video. Please also subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, and thanks for watching.